I once talked to a woman. She told me about she'd had an accident in an elevator and she'd broken her leg and got stuck under the elevator. And she was there for half an hour before anybody could get to her. And she said in that moment she realized that in this whole universe there was not one single grain of sand that was out of place. And that is a curious vision that comes to people occasionally. When you see suddenly that you've been looking at things in absolutely the wrong way. That you see that the most frightful things that can possibly happen fit in with us. It's very strange and very odd. But the reason is, of course, you see, that when you get rid of the idea of the governor and the governed, the boss and the employee, the king and the subject, there aren't any victims. Every creature that suffers in this world is unbeknownst, perhaps, to itself, doing it to itself. No one else is responsible. There are no victims. Because the whole thing is a unity. It is of itself so. Everything is of itself so. No one to blame. It's a very interesting experiment to let sound come to your ears. Now why don't you try this? Why don't you all just close your eyes and gently become aware of the whole world of sound. around you, in you. Don't try to identify the sound and put names on them. Just let them happen. You should listen like that before you go to sleep at night and realize that you live in a magical, musical continuum all the time. But you see, ordinarily, we keep trying to correct what we're listening to. Pay attention to this, ignore that. Say to the children, shut up! I can't hear myself thinking. See? But if you really know how to listen, you can concentrate on anything you want to in the middle of a complete pandemonium. But so in the same way, one could give experimental exercises in listening, in using your eyes, in tasting, in feeling things, for example, uh, picking up rocks and feeling them, because all this is letting yourself function, because this is an act of faith in one's own being. It is allowing the body to be a democracy instead of a tyranny. So the, when, when you allow the body, in other words, to do what it will do, then you say, well, it will do it for me, will it? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who are you? Just as the Tao itself is not something other than the universe, if you aren't something other than this design, which is not just the body, but the body and all its relationships to the universe, you don't stand apart from that. You don't have it. You're not in a situation where there's a kind of inspector, which is you, which watches everything that goes by, like you were watching the traffic go by on the street. But we think we are that. And indeed, seem to have a positive sensation of being the inspector who watches all this happen. Partly because of memory, which seems to give an impression that one is a static mirror, you see, which reflects everything that goes by. We get this from remembering. And on the other hand, we get it because we are trying to fight change and resist it. You can get a person to lie on the ground and say, now look, you are completely supported by the floor. You won't fall down, so let go. But it's very difficult for people.
because they're afraid that if they don't hold themselves together, they will turn into a nasty goo that will all fall apart and drip through the floor. So everybody is trying to use their skin and their muscles to hold themselves together, but that's just a, it'll all take care of itself. You won't fall apart. So there's a constant resistance going on. That resistance, you can be aware of it in terms of a sense of strain here between the eyes. This is its center. And that constant resistance to life and the sensation of it is what you actually feel when you think about yourself. I is that feeling of resistance. Now, if you let go, there is no necessity whatsoever for an inspector who watches everything that happens. You are what you experience. Your experience and you are the same. Your thoughts are you, your feelings are you. So you, there's no necessity whatsoever to try and stand aside from them and be standoffish and say, you go away. So, if you can trust yourself, in other words, through the flow, of what's going on, you won't need to resist it. And you'll find it works very well, just as your eyes work well when you don't try to force them. Just as the clothes are comfortable when you become unaware of them. Now, this isn't the same as numbness, you see. It's quite different. Because you experience your body in terms of what you ordinarily call everything else. In other words, as you look around here, we are taught to think what I'm looking at is out there. Now imagine this, look. What's the color of your head from the standpoint of your own vision? Nothing? Now watch. It certainly isn't black, is it, behind your eyes? You don't have a sensation of blackness. Nor of whiteness. There seems to be nothing there at all, as if you had no head from your own point of view. But actually, what it is, how it looks inside your head, is what you're seeing out here. Because you see, the optical nerves are back here. And your experience of all the shapes and colors around you is a sensation of the state of your brain. So what you're looking at is inside your head. But then you can't be said to be looking at it because inside your head is you. <laughs> so all this is how you feel. This is you. Only it's true for each person. You are not more specially me than I am you. It's mutual. It's like the dewdrops on the spider's web reflecting one another. So it is this then, this letting your mind work by itself, letting your eyes see for themselves, that is the preliminary to naturalness.